Okay, so let's start the lecture for today. Uh, so this is now the fifth uh, lecture uh, of, of this other GIS course. And today the topic will be uh, mapping and, and how to create maps. So basically what we will learn today uh, is, well, we will first go shortly uh, kind of we have already done quite many static maps so you know know the basic principles but I will show you some uh, useful parameters that you can adjust and, and use for making the, the maps more aesthetic uh, and, and, and so on uh, but mainly today we will focus on uh, on, on, on the topic of how to create interactive maps using this uh, Python package called Oke, uh, which is fairly fairly nice package for doing these kind of interactive visualizations and then you can also make maps with them. Then there are uh, also some materials uh, that are uh, can be useful but we don't go through them uh, in, the, in the lesson but, but basically you can go and and take a look of them if you are interested. Uh, there is one page or a tutorial showing how to create this kind of interactive leaflet map with this uh, Python package called Folium, which is uh, another another package that can be used to visualize data uh, in Python. Uh, but we will skip that uh, today. Uh, or at least I think we don't have time for going through that. Uh, then in the end, uh, of course, when you have created those interactive uh, visualizations, uh, you should be able to share them somehow and, and basically show it to your peers or your colleagues or whoever are interested in, in, your, uh, in your visualization. So we will take a look how it is possible to share those visualizations on GitHub. So the basic idea of interactive maps or visualizations is that basically how you typically use and, and, and view those is that you use a browser to do it. So then having like a GitHub site for your visualizations is really handy because you can basically share them with, with everyone and so on. And then we have the exercise five, which is basically quite easy uh, this week. So the idea is that you just take uh, and, and try to be creative and create as good as possible uh, visualization. One, one map that is static and one map that is uh, interactive. So you Uh, it's not, yeah, I will fix that, so it, it might be that it's it's still private. I will do that actually just now. Uh, but those are the topics uh, for for today that we will go through. And, and, and yeah, you can find some more information about the packages, links to their documentation and so on from, from here. So let's now quickly change the... Uh, repository to public. Like this. Now you should be able to see it. Okay, uh, but let's continue. Uh, so let's first go through and, and create uh, a static map. And basically what we will do here is that we use GeoPandas that you have already been using. Uh, I will just give you a few tips that can be used to, uh, for example, adjust the transparency of certain layers and so on, so which might be quite, quite useful. In, in some occasions. First of all, let's hope that this link works. It should, yes. 
So we have the folder with different data layers that we should download. So let's download this data here. Uh, and basically what we have there, so again, I will uh, just extract this. Uh, let's see, how is it? Yeah. So I will extract it here with 7-zip. And what we have inside is that we have a shape file with certain points. So these are the addresses that we actually geocoded uh, on lesson two, maybe. Uh, and then we have a metro line, then we have some roads in here. Uh, then, well, it seems that we have some social media posts here as well. Then we have the travel time grid to railway station showing travel times. And then we have some population data. So we have kind of different layers that we can uh, work with and, and you can use also in the exercise five <coughs> later on. But that's basically the data that we have. So let's first see uh, and do a static map uh, from using the travel time uh, grid, then put some roads and metro line on top of those and, and basically start with that one. So I will again do the similar tricks as, as always. So I will import GeoPandas. Uh, I will also import the matplotlib uh, so that I can adjust some uh, aesthetics of, of the plot. So import matplotlib.pyplot as plt is something. Then I have the file paths. So I have these three files. So uh, let's do so that I have this grid file path. So this is having the travel time information to this railway station. So I will do that and copy and paste. There has been some uh, difficulties or I don't know difficulties, but at least some things about the file path. So in in Windows, uh, it works a bit differently than, than Linux uh, concerning these, how, to set, how these different folders are separated. Uh, typically the recommendable way of or recommended way how to put the file paths in uh, in Windows is to use this R letter uh, before and then basically always copy and paste the folder path from here. So you get these like backslashes uh, separating each folder directory here. And then what, what I usually always do is that I just like double, well not double click, but click and then wait a while and then click again and then just copy paste this. So it's the best way to get it, get the file path correctly in your code. And I usually work like this that I actually specify the full paths. You, could, you can of course uh, specify a working directory uh, which then basically uh, can re so then you can only use the uh, file names of those files that you are reading from that working directory where you're working on. But this is how I tend to do things myself. Uh, so yeah, let's continue. Roads, file path. Again, I just copy paste this. And then I have roads. Oops, yeah. Thanks. Okay, now we shall now you can see it hopefully better. Uh, roads, then I have a metro line here as well. So it should be there. Dot shape. And let's read the data in. 
So let's say that create equals to gbd dot create file uh, create fp then road equals to gbd dot create file road fp and then metro equals to same thing but different file path so metro fp yes so let's run this file now and hopefully if everything goes right we should have here create yes we have some information with some polygons inside looks correct we should have some roads let's see what do we have there yeah it seems that we have some line strings in here um, representing some roads and then let's see about metro and again it seems that we have some line strings and some other attributes from that metro line okay so again first thing uh, whenever doing any analysis or any uh, visualizations of your data especially with the spatial data the first thing that you need to do is that you make sure that the coordinate reference systems are the same so you can actually uh, plot them on top of each other so let's see uh, what is the CRS of our grid? It seems to be this kind of projected coordinate reference system. What is it in the rows? Okay, it seems to be something else. Um, and let's see about the metro. Okay, they seem to be uh, more or less maybe identical. Uh, one good thing to do is that, well, I might now want to determine that I want my uh, coordinate reference systems to be the same as with this grid. So let's say that I create a variable called grid CRS and I pass the CRS value from this grid to there. Uh, or maybe I just call it CRS with capitals like this. So now we have inside only the uh, coordinate reference system information for, for that layer. And let's do so that we uh, reproject the roads to do the same, into the same CRS. <laughs> So, how we were able to do that? Well, we can say that roads equals to roads dot two CRS, and then we can specify with the CRS uh, parameter that what is the coordinate reference system that we want to use. Well, we use this CRS that we defined here, and we can execute it, and now we should have. Uh, similar data let's still specify that roads did it actually change now the yeah so now we have the CRS here as well defined and let's do the same for the Metro so Metro equals to Metro dot two CRS and CRS equals to capital CRS and let's check the same yes now all our data sets are in the same coordinate reference system and we are happy to move forward so let's create a map that looks like this uh, not maybe the prettiest one but at least there is some uh, some effort made to do this this map a bit more nice looking at least we use different parameters to specify different things so let's see what we can do so let's create um, a map using the geopandas way 
that you have been using all already a few times and let's specify travel times visualize the travel times uh, metro line and rows so again the order how you should uh, kind of plot these is that the kind of the layer that you plot the first will be below and the next one on top of that and the next one on top of that so here we of course want to plot first this grid uh, layer so let's say that I create this my map variable and I plot the grid here so basically what I want to map here so I can specify the column that I want to map so let's check what kind of columns do we have here so we had quite a few columns uh, what I'm interested in here is these so what these columns are representing are the travel time so car midday distance car midday time so I want to plot this car rush hour time so car rt column so let's specify that so car rt and then let's put some uh, use some parameters to to modify how how our map will look like uh, one good parameter to specify the width of the lines in your uh, in your visualization is this line width parameter so here we can specify that the line width should be 0 0.03 I'm now not sure is it pixels maybe the, the value here I need to check that later uh, then what I can do is that I can specify what is the color map so I want to use is it really the reds? Well, it seems to be. Uh, yeah, it's not in the picture though. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what is that. Uh, actually, so this is good to show you. Uh, so where you can find out different color maps. So just basically Google. So Maplotlib color maps and there is this color maps reference uh, page that usually pop ups in the as the first uh, page when you google it and here you can see different kind of color maps that are available and what i think that the color map that we have here might be something like uh, let's see might be something is diverging column maps or well it really doesn't matter we can just choose one and I will choose um, well for example this spectral I actually think that it might be that spectral so I just basically specify that the spectral is my color map here and then I can specify what is the how I want to basically classify those colors uh, or the values for different color classes so I can specify the scheme and this is basically a parameter that requires having Pycel installed so if you have had troubles with installing that as it has been unfortunately with with some of you you might want to skip using this scheme parameter here uh, and when we are using this scheme we can specify that how many classes do we want to use so let's use nine classes and then what we can do here is that we can it's actually not uh, quite relevant in, in this case but the alpha parameter 
uh, can be used to specify the transparency for, for this layer. Of course, now as we are having this, uh, this is the most bottom layer in our map, so it actually doesn't make any sense to add any uh, alpha, so any transparency to it, but I just want to show that it's possible to do so, uh, to add some transparency. So if this would be 1.0, then there wouldn't be any transparency. If it's 0 0.9, it's basically there is 10% of transparency and 0.0, .0 is basically that it's all transparent so that's how how you use this alpha parameter in your code cool uh, so now we have the one layer uh, visualized so the grid uh, let's visualize the roads on top of that uh, so visualize the roads. I will in the end run this whole code so you will see what comes out. So let's say roads.plot and again if we want to basically plot something uh, on top of the other layer so we wanted to use this x uh, parameter and basically what we can uh, pass here is that basically when we use this grid.plot what it returns is actually the x uh, from from this plot so we can basically say that x equals to my map and then we should be able to put this road layer on top of that grid uh, let's specify that the color uh, of the road should be gray and let's again specify that the line width of the roads is 1.5 and as a final thing let's visualize the uh, metro so let's say that metro.plot x is again my map so we put it on top of that and let's specify that the line width is 2.5 and let's find out some nice color uh, to our metro uh, one good place to look for colors on the web is that when you google uh, rgb color uh, and basically the first thing that comes here there are plenty of different sites that you where you can find nice colors for your graphs but one thing that I quite often use is this rapid tables uh, so the first so here you have uh, different colors available and, and here are also the names for the colors and there are the hex codes so there are different ways of specifying the colors for your uh, visual elements so one thing is to use the kind of css name so black equals black and and so on so you actually write the name but quite typical is that you use these kind of hex codes which start always with this uh, hashtag and then you have certain letters after it so the, this is quite typical uh, way of specifying a color and of course there are there is always as we are having RGB colors so there is the kind of red uh, green and blue value uh, values uh, defined for each color so uh, this is basically 255 is the these colors are like 8-bit uh, representations so there can be 255 different values in each of these RGB uh, color colors in, in, in the, the color that you pick. But yeah, so let's choose one color here, uh, for example, that one. So FF9933 is color for call for that so ff 
9933. So how I can specify that is that I indeed at the hashtag FF9933. So this is how you can specify a color code for your line in this case. And then as a final thing, uh, I want to remove some white space from the from the plot. So what I can do is that remove white space. So I can call this pld dot tight layout. So typically matplotlib kind of adds quite a lot of marching next to the figure. So what this does is that it kind of tries to make it tight so that you don't have so much white space next to the actual map. Then let's uh, specify the output path. So output fp equals to, I will put it on the same place. So lecture codes L5 and well, I just call it my map dot png. And then how we were able to save our uh, map is to use this pld, pld dot save fig. And here we can specify the output. So what is the file path? So it's the output file path that I specified here. And then I can specify that the resolution will be 300 dpi. So now we have everything that is needed and let's run this whole script at once by pressing F5 and see what do we have as an output. It's hopefully shouldn't take too long, but let's see. Hopefully we don't have any errors in our code. Usually this, uh, this grid is having quite a lot of polygons in it. So there is 13 and a half thousand polygons. So it takes some time to actually render those polygons. So that's why it takes some time. Well, as an output, you should have, or we should have this kind of map uh, saved into the disk. Uh, it's pretty, sometimes it's pretty slow to use the matplotlib to create maps because it kind of tries to do them uh, as good quality as possible. And this is the library that is used to do kind of scientific visualization, so they are kind of high quality images that it produces. But yeah, maybe we waited to to finish, but this is what we should have. And maybe we could with the interactive maps. Uh, so this is the uh, kind of main topic of today's lesson. So we will see how we can, how it is possible to create interactive maps such as this, where you have uh, some polygon layers this is the, these are the travel times and how you can basically plot different 
uh, elements interactively. So basically what I can do here is that I can, for example, zoom into, into here and take a look of the values and reset the whole thing. And we can have this nice legend with us. And whenever you are hovering over these grids, you actually can see the travel time to this uh, location, so the, to the railway station. And you also have this certain ID for each of the cells. So let's continue uh, with this and start from a bit easier. So this is kind of uh, what is possible to do, but of course we need to learn some basics first. So let's see how we can just create this kind of really simple uh, interactive visualization with some points on, on, on the plot. So we can zoom in, zoom out and, and do this kind of stuff with, with it. So let's start that thing. It seems to take forever with this thing. So I will just now stop it. And I will create a new file, interactive visualizations. So let's save this to here and call it simple interactive point. So, uh, what we are using here uh, is the uh, package called Pokeh. Um, you can find some nice uh, examples uh, how you can use Pokeh to create all sorts of visualizations in Python. Um, there is a nice gallery and as we already mentioned in the previous uh, in the previous period when we went through the visualizations using Matplotlib, uh, quite nice place to always start at looking the kind of library that you want to use or are kind of exploring if you would like to use certain packages to go through and check the examples from the web pages. And here in the Bokeh documentation, you have a quite nice uh, gallery of different uh, applications or, or different ways of visualizing data using this uh, Bokeh. So for example, this is one uh, examples which, which is really nicely interactive. So you have certain kind of uh, these buttons and, and whatever this is called in English. And then you have some uh, kind of that uh, list of uh, genres of movies that you can select here. And everything is all the time kind of interactively changing in, in, the, in the plot. So there are quite nice examples here that you can do do with Poke, uh, but let's start by some really simple, simple things first. So, uh, of course, again, uh, what we will use here is that we basically use the Poke uh, library. So we need to import uh, some uh, functions from there. So we call from Poke dot plotting. So this is a submodule uh, in Bokeh uh, where we can import. Well, first of all, we want to import figure and then there is this function called save. And basically a uh, really simple uh, or first of all, we need to initialize uh, the plot 
So we again, like similar manner as in matplotlib, you use the uh, pld.subplots to, to in initialize the figure. So we do a bit similar thing in bokeh. So we kind of create an empty canvas for, for our figure where we will start plotting stuff. Uh, initialize the plot. So we can call it psplot. And let's say that ps dot is figure. Actually, I know at this point I uh, run this, so everything should be okay. No errors were raised. So p equals to figure, and then we can add a title. So with this title parameter, we can say that okay, well this is my first uh, interactive plot. Well, actually not mine, but maybe some of yours, it might be. So let's do this and execute. And now when we check uh, and run the P, we can see that it's figure with some ID information. So this is just uh, some uh, unique uh, ID number or value for, for our figure. We don't need to care about that so much at this point. Uh, and of course, what we want to do, uh, as we had here, so we want to plot these uh, points into our figure. And of course, each point, uh, so we need to, they are points, so we need to add coordinates where they are located. So let's do so that I um, create a list of coordinates x and y coordinates so let's say that the x coordinates equals to 0 1.325 up to well up to 4 and the y coordinates are uh, other way around so 5 4 1 2 and 0 they could basically be any any numbers but let's use these that are the same as in the examples uh, now they are u let's say y coordinates like this uh, and then what we want to do is that we initialize this figure and basically how we can uh, create this kind of circle or this kind of point. So in Pokeh there are these uh, different uh, objects uh, and circle is basically the one that we can use to actually plot the, that kind of point on top of the canvas. So let's plot the points and how we use in Pokeh is different and how we plot on top of the the, the uh, figure something is that we say that p dot and here we have different possible uh, functions and, and objects that we can use to plot and what we are interested in here is the circle object so we set p dot circle and here inside uh, here the, the function or the object we said that the x values so just in the similar manner as with matplotlib uh, plots we were using the x and y parameters so in a similar manner here we said x equals to x chords and y equals to y chords that we specified here earlier on then we can specify what is the size of that uh, point. Let's specify that it's 10. And then we can specify what is the color. Let's say that it's red. So now when we execute this, we get this kind of glue render uh, object as, as a result. Uh, and as a final thing, what we want to do here, uh, this 
uh, spider IDE cannot visualize uh, these interactive uh, plots in here as, as it basically does with normal uh, maps that we have produced with GeoPandas or Matplotlib. So basically what we are producing always when doing uh, these interactive uh, maps and visualizations with Bokeh are HTML pages. So basically what we want to do now is that we want to save the visualization uh, as HTML file. And how we do that, just in a similar manner as, as with Matplotlib, we specify the output file path for our uh, visualization. So I want to put it here. So I'll just copy and paste the file path to be here on the, the lecture codes L5. And then I specify a file name for my uh, visualization. So I call it geopoints.html. And now how we can save our uh, figure here is that we basically use this save function that we imported in the beginning. So we call that save and what we are saving, so what is the object that we are saving? Well it's actually this figure, so we want to save the p that we initialized here and what is the uh, file name and the output path here, well, it's this out fp that we uh, defined here. So now, when running this uh, with f5, the whole whole thing, uh, it gives some warnings, but uh, no title was supplied. Okay, we don't need to worry about those. But now what we have here is this geopoints.html file and when we double click it what we will have is this kind of uh, visualization that we can open in a browser and now we can zoom in, we can reset the whole thing, we can use wheel zoom. So there are these nice buttons that we can use to for example pan the uh, interactive visualization we can as said do some box zooming wheel zoom is basically that you can uh, use the scroll in the mouse to zoom in and out like this uh, it's possible to save the figure as png so what it will do is that it will basically save the view that you have selected uh, for example now if i would save this uh, let's see pokehplot.png. Let's take a look. How does it look? Well, it looks just like this. So how I selected the data in my uh, interactive view, so it will be saved. And this reset button is nice because then you can get the original view for your uh, plot. So this is how you can create a simple point plot, uh, which is interactive. So actually it doesn't require that much and it looks quite similar uh, as what you have seen already. Uh, of course the kind of functions and how you specify different things are different than in for example Matplotlib, but fairly similar. similar. So let's move on and let's do so that of course now what we had here is that we specified these x and y coordinates but when we want to do some GIS and create some maps usually what you have is that you have some shape file and you read the uh, coordinates and the uh, geo geometric objects from those shape files for example and then we want to visualize those so let's see how we can create uh, interactive map from shape files. So I will save this. Um, 
Machine Point Point Map from Shapefile. So I just call it like this. And now uh, what we want to do is, of course, we want to uh, import the GeoPanda. So we want to have a package where we actually read the uh, geometric data. And now what I want to plot is that I have this data in here. Uh, so I have this addresses shapefile. So I want to read that in. So read file uh, points fb equals to and then I just copy and paste it the folder and then the file name. What are you doing now? Like this. And then what I want to do is that I want to read the data. points equals to gbd.read file again something that we have done so many times already and now we should have some points in here let's take a look what we have so indeed these were the addresses uh, that we geocoded in lesson two or three then we have some id and so on so some si simple point data is what we have here uh, and now what we need to do unfortunately uh, Bokeh doesn't really have good uh, built-in uh, functions to uh, right away deal with shapefile information or these shapely geometries so what Bokeh actually wants is that it only wants the coordinates of those points and basically what we need to do here is to create a, well always it's good to create a function that basically returns the x and y coordinates and puts them uh, into a, a separate columns in our data so we want to do that and let's basically start by defining the function that we use to actually get the x x and y coordinates. I just quickly basically show you what we want to have. So we want to have these two columns so x and y where the x column has the x coordinates and y column has the y coordinates. So fairly uh, simple. So the first thing that we want to do is to define the function. This is again something that we have done quite a few times so I create a function uh, called get point chords so we want to get the point coordinate so x and y uh, and in pandas and geopandas the first parameter is always the row then we specify a geom parameter uh, that we can pass the information about the column name uh, where the geometries are uh, stored and then we can specify the chord type. I will shortly explain uh, what that is used for. So let's say calculates or maybe returns the x and y coordinates of the geometry. This is what our function does. And Basically, to make our function shorter, I defined this chord type. So we can, with the chord type, we can specify that if the chord type equals to x, then what we want to do is that we want to return the row. So from that row that we are iterating over, uh, and from that geometry that we specify so the column name that contains the geometries of that uh, row uh, return the x coordinate so this is how this works then we can specify that l if the chord type 
equals to y. Well, then what we want to do is, of course, that we want to return row, geom, uh, and y. Uh, of course, if we would like to make this a better function, we would do some kind of checks that the parameters are right and, and, and so on, so that the function works more. Uh, it's more bulletproof to use. But for this purpose, I don't, I only do do it like this and I assume that the user uses the right parameter values in here. So uh, this is the function that we create can use and I will now execute it. And basically uh, what I now want to do is that I have the points data frame here and I want to calculate the x and y coordinates. And now I can uh, use that function that we created. So let's calculate the x coordinates. So points x, so that will be the column name for our coordinates. Then I again want to use the apply function uh, in, in pandas and then what is the function that I want to use? It's the get point chords. And then what are the parameters? So the geom, well, in our case, the geometry is now in this geometry column. That is the default uh, column where all the geometry, geometric objects are stored. It could be something else. If we would have polygon and their centroids, centroids, for example, you could pass the centroid column in this function so it makes this a bit more flexible to use and what is the chord type well uh, it should be x as we are wanting to return the x coordinates of of those geometries so this is how we can use the function and let's run it and we have an error uh, let's see what do we have here Geometry occurred at index F. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is really typical. And as you can see, it happens also for me. Uh, so if you specify or if you don't specify axis equals one, what it does is that it basically kind of goes column by column, like it thinking of how you iterate over a, a, a list of like an Excel table. So if the x is equals one, it will go row by row. But if, if the x is equals zero, which is the default, it will go column by column. So that is why usually if you see some weird uh, errors like we did now, it's because, yeah, you you have forgotten to put the x is equals to one. Sorry. The row in the function is the same. Uh, the, this one. Yeah. Uh, so the the row is basically so yeah we don't ever um, uh, specify that parameter in okay. in the function, so it's kind of. Uh, it's how this apply function works so that you first define the row that you're iterating over. If you would have axis zero, you could have a column in, in, in here. Uh, but uh, again, this could be whatever. So you specify the word. Uh, I, I just always use row because it's kind of intuitive that you understand that you are actually going over the rows of data in here. So now let's try again. And yes, now it seemed to work. And yes, what we have here seems to be the x values from this point geometry. And we can do the same for y. I just copy and paste. So calculate y coordinates. I just change my command a little bit. So points y equals to 
points apply but now the chord type I changed it to Y and now we should have the Y coordinates let's take a look and yes they seem to be correct and now now we are good to go so now we have the data in our data frame in such a format how the bokeh wants it uh, what we want to do next is that uh, in bokeh uh, we need to kind of convert this data frame uh, into this kind of column data source so it's a certain kind of um, data object that bokeh understands uh, there is a so it's called this and there is some more information about what is a column data source uh, so you can basically add uh, columns or basically to convert the columns to sequences or arrays so it it's something like that that we we want to do and use but what it basically does is that it converts these pandas columns and these arrays or series into such format that the bokeh can understand it. Before we do that, uh, we want to remove uh, actually the actual geometry from, from this data frame because the geometric objects that we have here they are these shapely objects and bokeh doesn't understand those so it understands integer strings uh, floating point values and so on but because this geometry uh, column contains some specific uh, objects of from shapely it doesn't know that so we want to drop that column so let's make a copy of the original data frame and drop the chaos geometry so I create a point df uh, and there I basically say that points dot drop so this is how we can drop a column uh, and function for that and what is the column that I want to drop well it's the geometry and the axis equals to one so again we want to do it like that and then we can as a last parameter we want to create a full copy of of that data frame uh, not the kind of view view from it and now what we have here let's take a look and now indeed now we have the original data but not the geometry column that we had of course if you would like you could use these coordinates to to do that geometric uh, uh, column again yes uh, like overwrite yeah. um, well actually what we are it depends I usually if I haven't if I'm not 100% uh, sure that do I need the original data still then it's always good to make a copy and, and kind of assign the data into a new variable but in some cases I, I just know that okay I just do some like data type conversion or something similar uh, in the data frame so then I just I just like override it uh, by specifying the same name as the original data frame so uh, now now we indeed so now we have this uh, in our uh, IPython console and next we want to as said so we want to convert this data frame into this column data source and how we can do that is that we need to import some stuff so we need to import from bokeh dot models uh, 
import column data source. So this is the kind of object or function that we can use to convert uh, or kind of tran transfer our pandas data frame to, to this column data source object. So how we can do that? It's easy. Uh, convert and this data frame to column data source. So we can say that P source, so the point source equals to, and we just call the column data source. And inside the parentheses, we basically specify what is the uh, data frame that we want to pass and, and convert. So in our case, it's this P underscore DF that we just copied. And now as a result, a result we have this new variable called P source, and it seems to be this column data source. Just to demonstrate uh, why we dropped the geometry. So I just tried to create a P source two from the original points data frame. So, uh -huh. is this something new? It might be. Hmm. Well, this is good if, if it would work because then we kind of don't need to do that extra step there. Well, we can find it out. At least it ma managed to convert it. Let's see if we can. Yeah, it still have those geometries. So let's see how we can now uh, make a map out of those points that we have. So we can first of all, we can take a look. What do we have? So this is the GeoPandas uh, function that we use. So points.plot, so it seems that we indeed have these points uh, represented here. And let's create a map, an interactive map out of those. So again, we need to initialize the plot. So let's again call that P equals to a figure. I want to Again, import these things from Poke. So from Poke.plotting, import figure and save. So figure, and then we can specify a title. Well, we can say that a map of address points from a shape file. So <laughs> just to describe a little bit what our maps map is about. And in a similar manner as, as earlier, uh, we use this p.circle and then pass these x and y coordinates. Uh, we again use the same uh, function, so p.circle. But now instead of uh, passing the actual coordinates, we said that the uh, x values should come from the x column and the y values should come from the y column. And then we need to specify that what is the source, so where the actual data come from comes from. So we specify that the source equals to p source. And we can again specify that the color equal is red and the size of the points is 10 as earlier. So now let's run these and take a look if they work. Yeah. And now we have the circles and it uh, kind of gave us this clue render object. And now let's save the file. Uh, so let's specify that the output fp equals to this folder here 
and let's call it uh, point map.html. So again, we want to save it as HTML. Let's create that variable with the output file path. And then again, we call the save uh, function. And what we are saving, it's this P. And where do we want to save it? It's this output FP. So let's take a look. Again, we get, got some warnings, but we don't need to care about those too much. And again, what we have here is this kind of point map. When we open it, so now we have a nice interactive uh, map from those uh, point objects that we had. Now what I want to do just to test is that because it didn't anymore gave me the warning about the shapely object. So does it now work with that one as well? So I just want to copy and paste this. Because then I can update my materials to test with shapely objects. Last year it didn't yet work. But let's see, what does it do now? So I have this P source 2 and yeah. Yeah. Okay. So indeed it it comes later. So it cannot store these point objects in the HTML file. So indeed my memory was right. So we cannot use the shape geometric objects inside our data. Uh, column data source. So that's it. So we still need to do it. So this is how we can do a map like this, which is quite nice. Um, then uh, what do we want to do next? Do, do, do. Oh yeah. So, of course, now we have this point map like this, but of course, well, this is interactive, you can kind of track it around, but it would be nice to have some interactive elements in here. So let's see how we can actually add uh, the addresses so that when you hover over the mouse on top of this point, you will get a kind of info box that pops up uh, showing the address or any information from the data frame. So let's see how we can we can do that. So there are certain kind of uh, interactive tools uh, that are available in Bokeh. Uh, for example, let's see, I Google Python Bokeh uh, what we are wanting to use here is this hover tool. So there are these plot tools. So they are pan and track, click, tap, scroll, pinch, and, and so on. So different kind of tools available uh, for you. Um, so here you have on the left, so there is box select, zoom, lasso, uh, wheel zoom, and, and, and so on, crosshair, which is basically adding, uh, kind of showing you two lines where, where your mouse is going. And then there are these tool tips. So what we are wanting to use is this hover tool like this. So let's take a look how we can create some interactivity. So we need to import that tool to be able to use it. So from bokeh.models, import 
hover true. So this is the one that produces uh, this kind of interactivity that when you put your mouse on top of this, you will get the address of the point in each place. So let's let's see what we need to do. So basically, uh, we need to add the hover tool so we can still work on the same uh, code uh, but before saving the uh, the map we want to add the tool so first of all i want to initialize again the hover tool so i said that my hover equals to hover tool uh, yeah, first of all, I need to import it like this, and now I should be able to use it. Yes. Uh, then, uh, what? How do we specify uh, uh, what information is basically showed uh, in this hover? Is that we basically uh, specify the tool tips? So let's take a look uh, once more. What did we have here? So points dot head. So we have the address. We have the geometry. Well, this we don't have anymore. But then we have x and y coordinates. So what I want to uh, point or kind of show to the user is the address of that point. So we have this address uh, column. So how do we do that? So now we have this hover tool initialized. So how can I specify what is the uh, information that will be shown to the user? Is that in he, in this my hover uh, hover tool that we initialized, we have this my hover dot tool tips, and here we basically specify as a list uh, that has a tuple inside and basically we can give a name so give the kind of when you put your mouse here it reads that the address of the point and then we have a column and and then the actual address so we can basically give some information like about what the information that we provide is about so let's just call it address and then uh, after that how we can specify that i want the information to come from this column here so we make a kind of another so these are always pairs so the first one is the kind of how you call it and the second one starts with this at character and after the add character, you specify that I want it to come from this address column. So this is how you can basically do uh, and specify the tooltip that we want to use. So now when I have run this, uh, let's see what do we have here. So we have this hover tool initialized. And inside there, we have spe uh, specified that the address should come from that column. Uh, the last thing that we want to do before saving the, the map is that we basically need to specify that uh, in this figure that we have initialized, we should add that tool to there. So add the over tool to the map. So we kind of need to put it in action, so to say. So in this figure, we have this P dot and we have there uh, should have, let's see, at tools uh, kind of function. Let's see. Yeah, we have this kind of function here. And we can say that add tools and what kind of tool do we want to add there? Well, it's this my hover 
hover tool that we just specify. And now after this we should be ready to go and we should have a, a hover tool added. And I just create a new file and I run this whole thing and as an output now we got a new HTML file and when we open it we indeed have this address included here and that's nice. Uh, we can of course also change the so now we have the address but of course we have the ID there as well so let's take a look of the original data again so we have this ID so let's do so that I well I could of course I could replace this address as the, to the into the ID but I can also add that ID uh, so that we have two kind of information included so what I do here is that inside this list that we have uh, I basically create another tuple uh, where this uh, ID will be uh, specified. So I just called ID as the first item in that tuple and then the source where it is coming from. So it's at ID. And now I just created map hover 2 and let's run this again and what we should have now is that now we have the address included and then we have the ID uh, at the bottom so it's quite straightforward to add information that you want to show in in this hover tool uh, boxes that you, you have so it's not that difficult uh, now we actually have this new button here so we have the hover inside here uh, why that might be useful is for example such as in here so you might have multiple hover tools so for example in this map we actually have uh, two hover tools which might not be that useful but we have the point which is a different object uh, it shows that the destination is railway station uh, and the other kind of box shows the uh, time to there and, and so on so basically when clicking this you can put on and off these hover tools so now we don't show anything but when we put the first one on then we have the uh, time information and uh, when we put the other one then we only have this uh, destination point information so that's kind of might be useful so uh, that's it uh, let's see mm, next we will take a look how to create line maps so how to kind of produce uh, lines or how we can do that and then finally we will see how to create a whole uh, kind of similar map than what we have here in, in Poke. but I think at this point we could have a short break for some 10 minutes so let's continue quarter to two and continue with the 